how do you know what Old Norse sounds like? Well, with any ancient language, we have a few different tools available to us, some available with just about any given dead language, some available uh, with dead languages that have descendants, like Old Norse does, some available only with Old Norse. Let's talk about what some of those are. On the general level, with any given language, it's written down in an earlier time period, one of the most important things to remember is that when people adapt a new alphabet to, to writing a language, or should I say an old alphabet to a new language, they're going to make it as phonetic as possible. So if I were to encounter Martians and uh, their language had a T sound, I wouldn't write that T sound like a toe with a uh, letter P, right? I would probably write it with the letter that my alphabet has available for writing T sounds, namely the letter T. Now, in general, this principle holds whenever uh, new languages are, are, are written in an old alphabet. So when Old Norse, or we can say specifically Old Icenic in the case of most of our texts in Old Norse, was first written down in the Roman alphabet, it was written in a pretty phonetic way, right? So that if you look at a word like fall, like take a fall, F-A-L-L -L in Old Norse, that's fat in modern Icelandic, but more like fall in something like Norwegian or Swedish, and it's much more likely that that LL in Old Norse reflects the sound in Swedish or Norwegian because it's more phonetically logical to somebody adapting an alphabet to a new language. Uh, if it had sounded like fat, like it does in modern Icelandic, we'd expect them to have written F-A-T-L. Now, with languages that have descendants, like Old Norse does in the modern Scandinavian languages, we can kind of triangulate back to a certain extent too and say, well, what is most likely to have been the original sound? Um, sometimes that can be because a preponderance of descendant languages have the same sound and the same word. Uh, although actually it tends not to be the preponderance of descendant languages, but rather the ones on the edges. If there's languages on the edges that agree about something, that suggests that they're not innovating together, they're preserving something old together. So we're gonna look at languages on the edges like Icelandic uh, or say Gutnish on the island of Gotland in the case of Scandinavia. And then with Old Norse, we are in the special instance of having a source called the First Grammatical Treatise written down in about 1140. Someone, we don't know who, wrote an account of how to better write Old Norse using the Roman alphabet. And he points out several vowel sounds, for example, that the old, that the Latin alphabet can't write very well. And so he gives us a sense of uh, what sounds that alphabet wasn't reflecting, and it's a wonderful resource for reconstructing Old Norse sound.